Okay, welcome to the 2003 Gold Cup, match day minus one. Minus one. Press conference here in Houston. We have Team Canada coach John Hurtman and our player Kamal Miller joining us. Please raise your question and ask, uh, introduce yourself and the organization you're affiliated with. And please ask in Spanish or English. And we have simultaneous translation if you need it. So we will start here on the floor. Go ahead. Good afternoon, John. How are you? Good, good. Uh, you didn't get the result you were expecting at the first game. What aspect, what aspect of the game have you been working this week? And the second question will be, you didn't have the days you wanted for the Nations League. Now you're going to have a good camp here in Houston because you guys stay until Tuesday. Uh, how, how benefits you're going to get about it with this young team? Well, we're going to get a suntan. <laughs> And uh, definitely, yeah, some heat stroke as well if we stay out too long. No, it's amazing. We, we've been to Houston quite a few times with Olympic qualifiers with the women's and, and the men. So we, we know what we get here. The last time we were in an air-conditioned stadium, so it was a bit, a bit nicer. So, uh, look, I think the preparation is uh, we're excited to test ourselves. Um, we, we knew the first game, there were so many elements of the performance we were happy with. It was just the result. You know, when you look at defensive XG, attacking XG, it was a game that, that Canada should have comfortably won. And it's football. And, and it's probably good for us. The, the team were exposed to a, a tough opponent uh, that was hungry and, and kept pushing right to the end. And we were, you know, we were tested. Uh, we were tested emotionally after the game. And, you know, I think the group over the two days and this turnaround have really came back stronger. The focus and training was, was brilliant in Toronto the next day, the energy levels. And there's been a real future focus. I don't think they've dwelled on anything from the game. Some things were addressed internally. Uh, but from what I can sense, they're, they're ready. They know they're coming in at tough conditions. There's another adversity test for the, for the group. But it's what we need. It's what we expect from a Gold Cup. It's a tough tournament, but a great tournament. Okay, go ahead in the back. Coach, uh, as is your national team to face to Guatemala, where are you obligated to win tomorrow? Oh, I mean, Guatemala, uh, I think, are a very strong opponent. They're top of the group at the moment. Um, and I think we're coming into a stadium that's going to be their home stadium. So for us, we're, we're excited to embrace that opportunity to play against a tough crowd in tough conditions, to show our metal, to show our team spirit, to show our strength. I think nothing's given in CONCACAF. Guatemala a well-organized, very well-organized. Um, their results over the last two years, uh, a lot of wins, not many defeats. Uh, so we know they're going to push us. They're going to test us. And they, they have a, a, as big a chance of winning here a, as we have. So for us, our mentality is going to be key. We have to want it more. We have to want those three points more than Guatemala as a starting point. If that's not there, you know, we, uh, we could be in some big trouble in the tournament. Next question. Thank you. Uh, hi, coach. Hi, Kamal. Hugo Ramirez from Univision. Uh, for you, coach, uh, what can you say about the, uh, in the past days, uh, Jason DeVoe, uh, the Secretary General of the CSA, uh, call for attention uh, with his declarations uh, recording, uh, regarding uh, sorry, uh, the supposed uh, bankruptcy, but then he, he backed those, those words. What can you say ab about that? It, it, there were moments of uncertainty, I think, uh, to, to leave that aside maybe uh, as of the past few days. And for Kamal, uh, what do you think of the Guatemala national uh, football team, the adversity you're facing tomorrow? And 
in another matter, uh, the, your new head coach of Inter Miami is Tata Martino. What is your opinion about, about that? <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, we have a lot of respect for the Guatemala team. Uh, very well organized, uh, similar to us. They have a lot of relationships on and off the field. A lot of them play together domestically and they've been putting these results together for the past couple of years and now is the time where they really want to showcase it to the world and no better opportunity than the World Cup. So the respect level is there first. Um, but we believe in our team definitely, uh, a new group and we know that this is the perfect opponent and opportunity for us to make a statement in the tournament. Um, no Gold Cup is easy. There's no easy game in this tournament. Every team has had their path to get here, and every team is here for a reason. So it's going to be a, a dogfight for sure. I think both teams are going to come out strong, and, and yeah, hopefully everything falls our way. We've had a good week of preparation, and after the tough results in the first match, uh, we know that now is a perfect opportunity to uh, put it all together and come out with the three points. And uh, about my new coach in Miami, I uh, had a lot of experience playing against him. And every time he was on the opposite side, uh, coaching the Mexican team, they, they've always put up a great fight. They've always been well organized and every game we've played against them has never been easy. Uh, there's been fireworks in all those matches, um, and it just shows his personality as a coach. So I'm really excited to uh, to be under a coach like that, and and yeah, I think it's going to be very beneficial for me and and helping me progress in my career. Yeah, I mean the the leadership at Canada Soccer are, um, are pushing pushing as hard and I think as, as far as they can to to move the organization forward. I mean, fortunately, we've been able just to focus our attention here on, on the Gold Cup. That's been really critical. So, you know, Jason's been able to, to manage those questions and have those conversations, which allows me to focus on getting the job done, <laughs> getting results and hopefully taking us to a, a Gold Cup final. Thank you. Go ahead. John and Kamal. Uh, John, you said at Las Vegas that for winning at the World Cup, you were needing to win in the present. You didn't win, but you guys get a, made a great effort. I think you, you were satisfied with almost with that. Uh, how much is this Gold Cup and the next one important for this group of new young players of being able to get ready or getting fit to, to be with the other players that are not here. I mean, David, Davis, Larry, and, and the other guys. And quickly for Kamal, uh, do you guys feel that every match you play, you are being judged by, by Canadian soccer fans? Because I, I have been reading, and it was like, it's not that bad. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, go on, Kamal. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's just where we are as a football nation now. I think the steps we've taken in the last four years have been incredible. And yeah, it's, it can be harsh at times, but that's just the expectation they have of a team with, with the quality that we have. Um, so we don't look at it in any kind of way negatively. We always use it as a positive and we believe that we, we owe them that after all the years of support where we weren't one of the top teams in CONCACAF and now we're here, it's, it's on us players and everyone involved in the association to put it all together and keep driving the game forward in Canada and take the country to, to new levels. So we always look at it as an opportunity to go ahead and make something great and just leave the jersey and the country in a, in a better place. I think just echoing that, I mean, the complacency trap is there. You go to a World Cup, you have a great run, but our country's not going to let us get complacent. They're going to ask hard questions, and I think that's part of becoming a football country. It's part of creating a, 
that, that football media that you see in Mexico or the US. I mean, I remember watching my counterpart in the US, you know, for a period of time. You know, the, the media were really tough, even though the performances were, were solid. Uh, this is where Canada's starting to move to, and it, it, it prevents us from taking a day off, a night off. We, we have to keep moving forward. So the expectations are high. We've, we've got to meet them. Thank you. If there are no more questions on the floor, we will now take questions from media that are joining us virtually. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Thank you very much, Andrew Jones from ESPN Anscape. Just a question for both. Uh, first for Kamal, what's been the most entertaining or most enjoyable experience with John Herman that you can recall in your time with Coach Herman? And for you, Coach, I wanted to ask you about, as was previously mentioned, about you and Jason Rose being aligned with each other. Do you feel that the CSB really needs to step up here and amend maybe their old contract with Canada Soccer and maybe really try to put emphasis on the whole national program instead of just what CS CSB wants to do? Thank you. Yeah, for me, there's there's so many so many moments from when I first joined the team and I got the call that I'll be joining a group back in 2019, and just having my first conversation, and the conversation was that we're going to qualify for Qatar and not go there to just be a team participating, but to really make waves in the footballing world, and we did that, and and he backed up his words. So for me, that's been the most fulfilling. Um, one of the most ex greatest experiences was uh, at BMO Field in Toronto when we did qualify and it finally all came together. Everything that we said we were going to do on that day was the day it was locked in and that we, we really did it. So for me, that's the one. Uh, over the years, it's never been a dull moment and uh, we have such a tight group, coaches and players together. It's, it's really a brotherhood. and. Yeah, it's been really strong over the years. So there's been so many moments, but for me, that would be the one. Yeah, I remember that call. <laughs> I remember it. And giving you that, that game against the US, his first cap. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I think to your, to your other question, it's the, the, the country's coming together. I mean, we're, we're growing as a football nation, and I think this is part of the, the growing pains of a country that's you know, being in the football wilderness since 1986, arguably. And, you know, we're collectively trying to take it to the next level. And it needs that next level leadership. And I think as, a, as an organization, as a football community, it'll come together. It, it's just time. It's, it, it's leadership and time and recognizing that you know, these top level associations that hit that next level, they, they take time. It, uh, it wasn't built in a day. And, you know, I think we got somewhere a little bit too early, 2022, I don't think was in the mentality of people at that time. But we did, we expedited the process and the women hit the gold medal. I mean, there's there's been a lot of good things happening. So I think as a country, we're getting to grips with that and we're, we're adapting and, and and having our leadership challenges but I think as a as a country we will we'll come together I'm optimistic that this is a big opportunity for for strong leadership to to create the relationships that take this country to the next level and it's going to take you know strong relationships to get us to that next place thank you next question John Molinaro go ahead Thank you. Hi, John. Thanks for taking hey, the time John. to speak to us. Um, you gave five players their first cap against uh, Guadeloupe on on uh, Tuesday, including three starters. Um, I'm just wondering because there are still there's still the matter of Victor Latoure and uh, even Tom McGill. How likely is it? Do you think that they might see action at some point in this Gold Cup? Yeah, I mean that's that's been my commitment, John, to to make sure that players that invested and put the time in and if their collective energy and spirits right through the period of time and they're performing and training, they'll get that opportunity. So I think you're going to see, 
you know, uh, the, the whole squad at some point through this tournament. And maybe someone I've got to call in because that's, that's what happened when we got the semi-final last time. Teshuak in Delhi was probably at home having dinner with his wife and he gets the phone call. He had to be somewhere within 10 hours to play a semi-final. So it's, it is one of them tournaments where you just never know. So I think the depth will be uh, given opportunity and be tested. And I mean, that's become part of the objective and the narrative here, just to see how you know, the players are able to handle international competition, but also the weight of expectation in that red jersey now. It's, uh, it's an interesting uh, mantle that people have to pick up now. It's not, not what it used to be. John, do you have another question? Your hand is up. Yeah, sorry, if, if you wouldn't mind. John, I, just to follow up. When you when you look at the last three games, so the two at the CONCACAF Nations League and, and Tuesday's draw against Guadeloupe, are, are there shortcomings in, in Canada's performances that you feel have to sort of be either addressed or corrected go, you know, going forward in terms of allowing Canada to go on a run in this competition? Yeah. I think every, every game there's shortcomings. It's a bit of a curse that... The coaching staff end up with that you you can't help but see there are the gaps you need to close and want to close because I think at the core of this we're we're looking at 2026 that that's been you know the World Cup gap analysis was really important for us to to share with these players the the realities of in three years where we've got to take this team to the type of experiences we've got to have but a big part of that John's the depth I think the um, the Nations League gave us a big final experience that we've not had. I thought that was brilliant for our lads to just get that big final experience. And even the disappointment of that was was important. Um, that we just couldn't muster. And I think people criticized us for intensity. I, I never ever criticized my lads for intensity. But there's a mentality just to find that winning edge, That whether it's the tactics, whether it's you know, a player that's just willing to do something, break out, you know, that, that moment where he beats two players and puts a top corner, it doesn't hesitate in his ability. That You've got those experiences we've got to amass. So I think all of this is part of the journey. And, and what I have to keep being honest with is, like, was this a performance that was not a winning performance? And when you look at the performance against Guadalupe, it was still a winning performance for Canada. It's a game any, you know, nine times out of 10, you come away with three points. And again, stats don't lie. The US was a tight, tight game, objectively. The emotion of it, you know, for some people, they want to take that lens and, and it's part of their, their mentality. But when you look at the cold, hard facts about that game, qualitatively, and then balance up what the objective stats said, you know, it was a tight game. That was a close game. They, they beat us in two areas, and those two areas were costly. So, you know, the learnings are, I think, preparation is, is critical. We, we played the U.S. and Orlando in a Nations League playoff game to get to the finals in 2019. They put 13 days of preparation, scored two set pieces in the first 30 minutes, which sunk us. And then in a final, you know... Three years later, they score a set piece within 15 minutes and, you know, you're playing away in the U.S. again and it's, it's not easy to come back from. But we've got to find a way. Part of it's the prep and not making the same mistake twice, three times in a row. And the other part is what we do internally with our mentality and our commitment to close some gaps. Thank you. Brandon Quick, go ahead. Thanks there. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Hey, John. Hey, come on, I hope you guys can hear me all right. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, some of those opportunities that the squad gave up against Guadeloupe and, and even going back to the U.S. against, uh, or against the U.S. in the CONCACAF Nations League finals on set pieces. Um, we saw on Tuesday on, against Guadeloupe um, the set piece routines that um, I guess I'd started to introduce um, without giving away too much on, on that side of the game plan. Um, how much of I guess this week, have you been able to spend on some of those um, chances, both offensively and defensively? I'll leave that one to come off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 been a major focus for us, definitely, um, at this highest level when games are close and both teams are 
having their way in the game and executing their game plans at the highest level. It is about those little details. And we know in big games and in finals, and especially in tournament football, set pieces are one of the main uh, sources of goals in these big games. And uh, we've, been, we've been done by it. Uh, so we felt that disappointment and that pain because it really hurts. You could put in a strong 90 minutes and one set piece can, can kill it all. So we, that's definitely been an area of attention for us and we're, we're pushing both coaching staff and players to make it right so we won't feel that again and hopefully make some of these other nations feel that. All right, if that's all it, we will end the press conference match day minus one for Team Canada. Thank you and good luck Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you. Thank you.